Hello and welcome, it's Dr. Red Frizzle here, and today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about vitamin B11, otherwise known as salicylic acid. So, salicylic acid, which is otherwise known as vitamin B11. So, vitamin B11. Okay, so what are some of the deficiency symptoms of this particular vitamin? We well, can get things such as fatigue, weight loss, diarrhea, and a weakened immune system. So I'll write some of here, these up here, actually. There's also anemia. Tiredness, weight loss. And there's also things like diarrhea and a weakened immune system. Okay, so, so let's analyse these in a little bit more detail. So, so these are the deficiency symptoms, by the way. So right, deficiency up here as a subheading. Okay, so, so, so to start off we've got anemia. Now anemia is a condition related to the blood. It's also relating to the delivery of oxygen from the blood to particular muscle cells. Um, if you've got anemia, it means there's a type of anemia that's called sickle cell anemia, which is where your, your blood cells shape is altered, which means that blood flow to particular muscle cells that um, is restricted, therefore muscle cells don't get the oxygen delivery they need, because if you remember, um, haemoglobin combines with oxygen in order to transport um, oxygen around the body in the, in the blood, um, essentially. And and obviously, if, if they're a different shape, the blood cells, but the, if they're a different shape, the blood cells, they can't actually fit through small enough vessels to get to the like extremities. Um, because if you remember, the extremities um have like capillaries, because it starts off as as arteries. If if you're talking about the blood that's pumped around the body from the heart, um, it goes into the arteries, then arterioles, then capillaries. But because the capillaries are quite far away and quite narrow, it actually prevents the sort of transfer of that. Um, transfer of oxygen um, in the bloodstream. You also get things like fatigue, um, weight loss, diarrhea and weakened immune system. Now diarrhea is like a common defect with particular um, deficiencies of various types of vitamin B. It isn't just this one, it's generally sort of just like an upset stomach that can be um, a, a symptom from, from a multitude of different types of vitamin B. Um, if you watch my other videos in this series you'll sort of notice that Okay, so they're the, they're the main deficiency symptoms. So now we need to look at look in a bit more detail about one of the main things, which is the function of this vitamin. So I'll, I'll do you another heading up here. Functions. Okay, so one of the functions is it's involved in DNA and RNA production. DNA, RNA production. Now, as you're probably aware, um, DNA and RNA are both of a coding molecules that actually code for particular polypeptides. Um, the main difference is that DNA ha has a has a different type of sugar. Um, it's also it's also a double stranded molecule, and RNA is generally associated with the transfer of particular things. I don't want to go into sort of sort of too much. I can't say anything too specifically because there's three different types of RNA, and they're all slightly different. But but as a rule, RNA is involved with transfer of various things. That's where you get like transfer RNA, messenger RNA. It's all involved with the trans transfer of particular genetic information from one place to another. Generally, DNA is stored on chromosomes in the nucleus, um, when it is on, on pretty much all eukaryotic organisms. Okay, so so that's one of the one of the functions of it. Um, it can also help protection against cancer. So protection against cancer. Now you're probably thinking, well that's not particularly related at all to this function, but it actually is quite closely related because if you think about it, DNA and RNA are the codes for particular proteins. If, if they aren't made correctly, then a mutation in the genetic information is more likely and a genetic, a genetic uh, mutation sorry, is what can lead to cancer. Okay, so they're quite sort of closely tied in. Um, it's also used in aspirin production and it can be found in willow trees, this salicylic acid. Um, so, used in aspirin production. 
Now you're probably thinking, well, why is that important? Well, aspirin's a painkiller, so it's used to reduce pain if you have sort of any any sort of bodily defect that may lead to some pain. Uh, you can use aspirin as a painkiller, um, and, and it's sort of processed into like pills and stuff that you can take. Um, okay, okay, so what actually is is it? What else can it be used for in terms of treating particular diseases? So I mentioned protection against cancer. It can also be used to like remove warts and verrucas. A wart wart and verruca, I don't know if you know, but they're caused by the same virus. So so, so essentially, the way that the, the way that this actually works, it is salicylic acid can actually kill. Um, it can actually break down, sorry, keratin, which is sort of a protein that's found in the skin. Once that protein is broken down, it can essentially be like rebuilt and, and refreshed, essentially. So you don't actually end up with the same skin defect that you had before. It's sort of the main point of that. So it can be used in treatment to treat um, verrucas slash warts. Okay, so that's one of the, one of the sort of main functions of it. Um, now we need to talk a little bit more detail about the actual sources and where you can get this from. So spices is one of the key areas. Uh, you'll be quite surprised here probably. Uh, spices such as, um, that there's a whole range of spices that you can get it from, but I'll mention like a couple. You have things like cumin and uh, chilli powder, sorry, not curry powder. Okay, so you have things like cumin and chilli powder um, that contain it. You don't have to just get it from spices, you can get it from various fruits and vegetables. So fruit and veg are called kind of quite standard sources of vitamins. Um, there's a number, of, there's a wide variety of, of different fruit and vegetables you can get it from. So I'm going to list them all. I'm not actually going to list any because the, the, sort of the majority of fruit and veg you can actually get it from in general. Um, it it can actually be synthesised that this uh, this particular vitamin by um, phenylalanine. Hang on, I'm, I'm going to try this out again. Phenylalanine. It is phenylal phenylalanine. Got. I'm really sorry. I, I sort of struggled to say that. So I'll write it down for you. Phenylalanine. Okay, and phenylalanine is a type of amino acid. I'm sorry, I struggled to say it. Um, amino acid called that can help actually synthesize this particular vitamin. Um, uh, the, the reason why um, that this particular phenylalanine is, is described as, as an essential amino acid, I should write that there actually, essential, is because you need to get it from your diet. So, so there's, a, there's a, quite a, like a couple of sources of, of phenyl phenylalanine in the body. Um, well, not in the body, but that the body can actually obtain it from particular food sources such as beef and nuts. So you can actually get this phenylalanine from beef and nuts. Okay, so 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 essentially, um, like phenylalanine in the body can be one source of this particular vitamin. You can also get it from various spices and fruit and veg I mentioned here. But it can the the, the important point I'm making with this one is that it can also be in addition to this. Uh, synthesized from an amino acid known as phenylalanine. Okay, <laughs> right. Okay, so that, that's pretty much all I want to talk to you about for this video. Hope you've enjoyed it, and hope that's been been sort of a bit of a help. And and this is probably going to be the, the like, concluding video um, of of this whole series in terms of like the the, the, the B top vitamins. And the reason why I said it's probably going to be a concluding video, um, and not it is, is because I'm considering making some vitamin C. D and E. I'm not sure if that'll be something you're interested in, but anyway, I'll see you in the in the next set of videos. Um, hope you've enjoyed this video. See you then.